Hey, what's up guys, Ara here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 139 today for the Belgium Grand Prix in Season 7. If you guys did miss the previous one then, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, because in the last episode we had the major rule regulation reset for the R&D, so definitely go check that one out to get clued up and all of that. But going into this one then, we've got a lot of plateaus for a lot of the field, but Red Bull, Mercedes improve at the top end, and the Ferrari are trying to play a bit of catch-up there at the tail end of the field, but surprised, uh, like I said before, that uh, Mercedes was still upgrading, but now Red Bull have come out of nowhere with an upgrade. I thought Red Bull were going to be done. I thought they were going to be plateauing along with Renault on that top line, that second line there for the rest of the season, but no, they surprised me as well with an another upgrade, and so that's another blow for us, because like I said, we have maxed out the car completely now, even reliability-wise we've maxed out the car, so we can go nowhere, so we are really just going backwards and backwards compared to our rivals of Red Bull, Mercedes, even Renault. Uh, they've been a little bit uh, iffy uh, as of late in the last few episodes, but still, they've been right up there. And so, uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Last episode, obviously, Spore Alert was a very good one for us in terms of results. We end up winning the Hungarian Grand Prix, our second win in the team. But uh, obviously, circumstances came into it, and we can't guarantee a performance like that, you know, week in, week out, basically, every single race. And obviously, the previous episodes before Hungary, our car was looking like it was struggling a little bit. Obviously, we were having issues in qualifying as well. Thankfully for us, here today on Saturday in uh, the Belgium Grand Prix, it's all nice and sunny, at least for the first part. There might be some rain forecast for Q3, but Q1 and Q2 is hopefully going to be a bit of formality. At least uh, Q1 was, and Q2 across the line, pretty decent first lap time set. We did actually uh, think about going for a second run, and so I went through the session. It was getting cloudier and overcast, and there was an icon for rain right at the end of the session. So I did go out to try and set a time. Actually, lo and behold, uh, the rain started to come down straight away at the end of Q2. You can see the rain droplets on the halo, and it was a very uh, slow, devastating uh, end to the lap, really, and a bit of a messy one. Uh, thankfully for us, we are in P7. I was afraid, though, as we crossed the line, that I was going to fade to black and come out, and I'll be outside the top 10. Thankfully not. I do finish up in P7, just directly behind Charles Leclerc in P6. So matching my teammate, that's at least very good for us. And for the first time, uh, really, in a long while, we're looking really good in qualifying. Obviously, we did the job in Hungary, but, uh, you know, now it's kind of a consistently uh, second time now not having an issue in qualifying. But just like Hungary, the top 10 shootout will be an intermediate condition. So I filled up a, a bit more fuel than uh, was needed for one lap. So we're going to do two consecutive runs around here. The way Spa is, obviously, such a long lap, we probably will only get these two runs in. So it was an okay first lap. Not too great, though, because I made a lot of mistakes in turn one, especially. You can see we're going to gain a lot of time on the exit straight away. I mean, even that turn one wasn't amazing. I missed the apex completely, but on the traction, we got that uh, a lot better. And then through uh, Puon here on the left hand, a uh, little bit tighter on the line, trying to get the car, wrestling it through on the racing line. That's kind of still on us there. The dark patch of tarmac there. And you can see on the top right, getting a lot of time. At the moment, we're P10. Leclerc is in P8, so we really need to step up our game if we want to try and match our teammate at least, but we found a lot of time here, so this could be a very good lap, you know, as we go through the last two corners and the bus stop chicane to the line, you can see the uh, car dancing around still as it lacks grip, but across the line, and it's going to be P5 there for us. And that is going to be a very great position. I will thoroughly take that there because I really was uh, fearing the worst, really, after that first lap in P10. And Leclerc, in the end, finished down in P9. So I will very much take P5 uh, behind both Mercedes and two Red Bull Hondas that are two by two there. So clearly the Red Bull and Mercedes cars, both their upgrades are working well this uh, evening. Red Bulls, uh, apparently even more so. In the wet, they were definitely faster than the Mercs. Uh, not surprisingly, really, because that uh, kind of the same scenario as in real life. But P5 for us, very happy with that. So let's go into Spa then. It's going to be an interesting one. It might actually start raining at the very start of the Grand Prix, so we'll have to see. But let's go to the grid then and see how the entire thing shapes up. Who doesn't love the Belgian Grand Prix? It's the race, of course, that gave maiden pole positions to the Jordan and Force India teams, with Rubens Barrichello and Giancarlo Fisichella, respectively. Jordan, of course, would then go on to better that here in 1998 with their first ever victory. And you can guarantee that something special will always happen at Spa-Francorchamps. But what that something is today is anybody's guess. Spa-Francorchamps then, a 4.35 mile tour of the Ardennes countryside with nine right corners and 10 left corners, giving us a grand total of 19. Average lap speeds in the dry can reach about 145 miles per hour, but without a significant improvement in these conditions, we won't be seeing anything like that today. 
With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk briefly about Charles Leclerc. Looks like they've got a tough race in store today as grid penalties from changing power unit components has forced them further down the field. But on the bright side, at least those fresh components can help them maintain the power they need to come through the pack. I expect to see them take a more aggressive approach today to make up for the compromise start. So let's have a look then at the starting grid ahead of this Belgium Grand Prix for Season 7 of my F1 2018 career mode. On pole position then is going to be Pierre Gasly in the Red Bull Honda. Alongside him is a front row lockout for his teammate there, Max Verstappen, in second place. The second row is all Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Hulkenberg, with the third row with them occupied by myself and Carlos Sainz. Dan Ricciardo in Esben Ocon next with the top 10 Alonso and Brendan Hartley. Van Dorn in P11, Sergio Perez P12 with Gro Jean and Stroll next, Soropkin and Bottas on the next row, with Sebastian Vettel alongside Kevin Magnussen for P17 and 18. Charles Leclerc with a massive grid penalty down to P19 from P9, and Kimi Raikkonen to round out the grid for the Belgian Grand Prix. Right, so one, we are indeed starting on intermediates. It's a little bit damp out there, but it's going to get dry soon enough. So the strategy is going to be interesting. But uh, really, at this point, I don't know what it's going to look like because I don't know how many laps, honestly, we're going to be able to uh, stay on the intermediates. We're going to have to kind of uh, cross that bridge once we get to it. But two as well, it's going to be a bit of a lonely fight today with Leclerc having a massive engine penalty of 10 places from P9 down to P19. So that might be a bit of a, bit of a blow to a constructor's fight with Renault and Red Bull and even Mercedes. But we're going to have to make the most of it then as we get prepared then for the five red lights to so the Belgium Grand Prix here at Spa Francorchamps. Here we go then to the five red lights from P5 on the grid. Four lights are out and we're underway and it is a pretty okay start initially in the first two gears but then third and fourth gear bogged down a little bit with a bit of oversteer and it's a massive dive bomb there from the Aussie man. Daniel Ricciardo in the McLaren pushes wide the Mercedes and especially more so is Verstappen in the Red Bull loses it from second place. He's down to P5 I think that is Verstappen as we're up into P3 now chasing off the Hamilton but Ricciardo sends it to the inside as we go up the hill then it's a side by side we have to go off track a little bit and we actually get a legal overtake that's fair play we have to take evasive action there it was either spinning off the circuit or taking over the curbing and cutting the corner slightly so Ricardo gets that position back but Verstappen very opportunistic here and forces his way through we lock up on the front tyres and Verstappen manages to dance his way past around the outside and he's up into P4 now as uh, we're back down to our grid slot of P5 but at least we're ahead of the other Mercedes car. I think that is uh, Nico Hulkenberg, who's now behind Carlos Sainz and Van Dorn as the Spaniard and uh, Belgian man fight away. The home favourite, actually, Van Dorn there in the Toro Rosso. So he'll want to try and get ahead of that Renault. And he actually has done, actually, that Toro Rosso. Pretty damn good. And like I said, the two Renaults, as of late, despite being still third best car on the grid on paper, they've really not been turning up so far. Even, you know, both Sainz and Alonso in the last two episodes, especially. But now here we go now, looking on to Verstappen versus Ricardo here. Verstappen desperately trying to get back into a top three position after losing it badly off the front row. He makes that overtake uh, count. He's back up into P3 and he actually slows down Ricardo quite a fair bit. So we're right up his chuff now on lap number two. So we, could we try and do anything to attack uh, to try and get P4 as we uh, clearly are uh, struggling with a bit of grip there with a massive amount of oversteer on that right-hander. Uh, like I said, obviously it's going to get dry pretty soon actually and so I can already feel the grip going away. It's that kind of uh, unfortunate stage where, where it's, it's too dry for intermediates almost already but it's also too wet for the slick tyres. So it's that very awkward period where the AI are so good and OP in a way in these kind of uh, changeable conditions where it's just on the teetering edge of dry tyres and so it's Gasly leading the way dominating the Grand Prix for now from Hamilton Verstappen then Ricardo is going to remain in P4 unfortunately for me he's got a massive gap to me now in the next literally two three laps there in myself in P5 and I'm struggling just to keep ahead of Van Dorn here so the AI really do have an advantage at this stage meanwhile uh, we mentioned Leclerc who's down in P19 he's actually made a pretty good recovery already I think he's around P12 or P11 just outside the top 10 he's made a very good drive so far and so he's looking like uh, likely to maybe get some points by the end of this race so at least that's one good uh, bit of news for us as a team but on lap four I am really struggling in these conditions you can see Ricardo on the mini map has gone so much further away and now the DRS enabled and so that is the sign we are going to come in for the dry tyres here as soon as the DRS enabled that is when you know it's time for slicks but I was pretty much praying for slicks right now because I could not go one lap longer on those conditions otherwise I would have probably lost the uh, lost the place to Van Dorn because the AI were just so good 
in those uh, conditions are just I was just horrendous basically I could have put my hands up I can't really make any other excuse for it I was just uh, really bad on the entry exit and the traction of it so thankfully we are going to go on to dry tyres we're going to opt for the soft tyres now I wasn't sure what the strategy was going to be like I assumed you know I just kind of trusted my team basically to go on to soft tyres we've got a few people ahead of us on super softs the likes of Verstappen on super softs Ricardo's gone to soft tyres so there is a bit of a split on what tyres everyone's opted for so like I said I'm going to trust my team and we'll just see what this strategy will look like uh, whether that's going to the end of the Grand Prix and a very audacious conservative strategy or maybe two sets of uh, soft tyres I'm not really sure what the other guys are thinking uh, that are going on to super soft tyres but eventually now we move on to lap six DRS is available and we're open as we're within one second of Ricardo so we're trying to actively chase down the Aussie man Leclerc on the top left there you can see is just behind us he goes behind Van Dorn now but it looks like on the mini map he actually will be with, with just inside the top ten I think as he comes out now as we look at the replay just ahead of that Haas and Ferrari there so I think he's uh, he's not lost any time but he's not gained too much there because he went one lap longer on the Inters but ahead of him is the Force India then uh, Mercedes car of Hulkenberg chasing after the uh, Toro Rosso car and I think this is Esban Ocon because Van Dorn is the one further up ahead so Hulkenberg with DRS round the outside he goes but oh Ocon comes back very aggressively there super soft versus the soft tire but the Toro Rosso has got the pace so far to stay ahead of that Merc then is myself chasing after Darren Ricciardo it's actually my bad that's not Ocon there that's got to be Van Dorn because Van Dorn was behind me on the top left ladder and so I couldn't quite tell the number from uh, this perspective obviously the uh, kind of overcast conditions make uh, the lighting a little bit difficult to see those numbers there so it was Van Dorn then defending against Hulkenberg very successfully then as we move back to our POV on lap 9 we've got DRS available so we're still within one second of Ricardo. and obviously as we go through this Grand Prix now the track is going to warm up I'm going to warm up in terms of getting into the rhythm but obviously also the guys around us are whereas uh, at the moment though to be fair Ricardo is not because he clearly made a mistake there with that right hander so I think we've got him on the ropes a little bit it might just be a matter of uh, time and patience uh, before we overtake him because obviously on paper we should have the faster car here but he's doing the job Ricardo fighting as hard as he can but here we go now swinging through to the inside of Blanchimon towards the bus stop on the outside this will be I'll leave lock up quite badly though on the front left and Ricardo is there for the switchback move we go a little bit deep and wide there on that run don't get the best exit and so Ricardo has a very good run that McLaren is very good on acceleration we squeeze him to the left very aggressively now to the inside of turn one there just about got our nose in there with side by side on the exit Ricardo goes off circuit and accelerates past us there that's a little bit illegal I feel he was completely off circuit and he managed to stay ahead of us there a bit like Vettel v Button in 2012 was it uh, so a little bit iffy but uh, we're going to try our best to uh, keep up with him as we move to the left hand side now DRS open a lot of wobbling there a lot of uh, uh, kind of jousting for position almost and a bit of a kind of uh, battle of wits of uh, who's going to go first and blink first a bit of chicken on the main straight but uh, we get past him eventually and we're up into P4 now massive gap though to Verstappen so honestly I can't lie even at this stage I think uh, the, the, the reality is the highest position we can hope for is P4 the, the two Red Bulls and the, the Merc of Hamilton are just too much in a world of their own which is fair play uh, so we're just gonna, this is going to clearly have to be a bit of a damage limitation race for not only myself but also Leclerc you can see he does the job though overtaking the Mercedes car of Hulkenberg and then the Toro Rosso of Van Dorn so Leclerc up into P6 so from P19 to P6 what a drive it's been for my teammate so far he's on super soft though to be fair so he's going to make an earlier pit stop than me so I would expect him to be going uh, that quickly and getting past those guys and speaking of earlier pit stops Hamilton now is uh, uh, in P3 uh, three, uh, three ahead of us because he's made a pit stop, I think. Uh, yes, he has. So there he is, right, right ahead of us, actually. A little bit confused about that, where he was on track, but there he is, right ahead of us. So Verstappen and Gasser yet to make a pit stop. Hamilton's made his, and he's right there, so that kind of guarantees pretty much he's going to remain ahead of us because myself and Ricardo still have a pit stop to make. Well, we keep him honest, actually. We keep up with him as we go through the last few corners now. Ricardo sticks with me, actually. So me and Ricardo are stretching this stint out, and Verstappen is in the pit lane now and we might actually just jump Verstappen you know because he was in P3 uh, before Hamilton was the one in P2 so he'll get back up into P2 and there is Verstappen just behind us he slots in between myself and Ricardo, and so Ricardo will be neck and neck he actually has to slot in behind unfortunately for the Aussie man but up the hill now down the Kemmel straight will Ricardo have the balls to overtake Verstappen doesn't look like it because the Honda power is powering Verstappen away from Ricardo and actually closing up to me and we're feeling the pressure a little bit and to the next corner I made a really bad mistake there uh, bad lock up on the front left tyre unfortunately and that allows Verstappen just to dance past us there so yeah just I can't really say much else just a bad lock up there I don't know if I felt the pressure almost of Verstappen coming in and closing up on me although to be fair I lock up again on the front right tyre so maybe the tyres are just going off a little bit 
but uh, whatever the case, I'm down to P4 now, but it doesn't really matter. I wasn't really racing Verstappen too much, so it's probably a good thing that I'm not fighting Verstappen too much, because it allows me just to concentrate on my lap times, basically, as Ricardo now comes out of the pit lane just ahead of Leclerc, that is. So Leclerc, on the undercut strategy, has closed up quite a bit of time there on Ricardo, and so for me, I went one lap even longer on this overcut, because I was quite confident I could pull out the time. Meanwhile, Leclerc, as I'm coming in the pit lane, Leclerc is trying to do the job on the back straight towards Blanchimont, down the inside of Ricardo. He's made the pass pretty damn easily there. And so Leclerc might even be battling myself. So it might be us two teammates side by side on the exit of the pit lane, maybe. Let's see. This is going to be very, very close, I think. So we're in for the pit stop then onto another set of soft tyres. The softs couldn't go all the way to the end, unfortunately. So another set of softs then needed to get to the end of the Grand Prix. But as we come out now on the right hand, where on earth is Leclerc? Where is Ricardo? There he is. So uh, it's not uh, too close, but it is still pretty close compared to what it was before the pit stop phases. So Leclerc, that actually shows he's done such an amazing job to recover from uh, 10 places back from where he was. And that was already four places down from where I was, uh, P9 to P5. Meanwhile, Verstappen's still in the world of his own in P3, trying to close up on Hamilton for P2, trying to desperately make this a 1-2 for Red Bull once again, like it was in qualifying. And Gasly, in a world of his own, dominating this Belgium Grand Prix. So he's probably well on his way to probably taking back the lead in the Drivers' Championship, unfortunately, for myself. And with Gasly probably likely to win this Grand Prix, it's very crucial I get the maximum position I can of P4 here. The Leclerc is coming like an absolute steamroller here. And so at this moment in time, if this was real life, I'd be calling multi-1-2 at this stage because, you know, he's nowhere near us in the championship. He's nowhere near the top of the standings. I'm the one in the championship fight, but he's coming at me and I need this P4 to try and limit the damage here. And at this stage, halfway through the season, you would kind of suggest, you know, at that stage, you kind of, you know, go, okay, you know, okay, fella, you're second place in the, in the standings. You're nowhere near your teammate there. You're not the one in the championship. I don't fight your teammate, but obviously being a game, I can't call multi-1-2 even though I want to. And so we have to fight very hard against Leclerc here as he's pulling on the wrong side as he's done the job around the outside of lap 18 here. So we have to really fight for this P4, unfortunately, there. And it's going to be an inter-team civil war because I really want this position. I am not opposed to going very aggressive against Leclerc to uh, keep this P4 position. But for now, we get past him very cleanly with DRS open there. Ricardo's going to do the same. So actually, I'm very happy about that. Uh, it might be a kind of a counterintuitive because for the team uh, championship, for the constructors, it's not great if Ricardo overtakes Leclerc. But for my sake, for the driver's championship, it's great for me if Ricardo can be a buffer for me. So Leclerc, the, clearly the faster man out of us three, uh, doesn't attack me too much. Meanwhile, speaking about attacking, Verstappen and Hamilton are having a duel. And so look at this. This, this is the kind of scrap we want to see in real life. Verstappen and Hamilton going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the Mercedes and Red Bull Honda. Neck and neck. Literally, these guys are conjoined by the front tyres and the rear tyres. They're so equally matched here. And this is a fantastic fight. They're going to go all the way up the hill. Yes, they are. Wonderful stuff there. Hamilton squeezes out Verstappen right at the crest of the hill. They go down the Kemmel straight now. Will Verstappen have the speed? DRS open. Honda power. Probably overtake mode. And Rich Mix engaged on the outside. Can he pull it long? No, he can't. Oh, it doesn't look like it, but Hamilton will keep it in. And he will maintain that inside line. And Hamilton for now maintains P2. Verstappen P3. Meanwhile, back to our fight then. Down the back straight. Leclerc pulling alongside us and actually ahead of us by just a little bit. But we come back at him and it's a lot of wobbling. A little bit of contact made actually as we go through Blanchemont side by side there. And Leclerc gets the better of me, but we're going to make a dive back down the inside of uh, the bus stop chicane, so it's a real hammer and tong fight there. We're on the outside, going to try a bit of a cut back and try and strap the car a little bit faster than my teammate there on the left-hand side, going to pull in for this slipstream, and so this is, uh, this is the fight means a lot. This is uh, this could be crucial. You never know. Towards the end of the championship, you know, a few points could be in it, and that could be the difference from P4 and P5 in this very Grand Prix. You just never really know in Formula 1, so we have to try and fight this, and like I said, at this stage, oh boy, would I like an option in the F1 game just to go multi-1-2, get out of my way. Team orders in effect because I want this position. Leclerc is not giving up with our fight. We open DRS, we pull to the right. It's going to be a simple pass once again. But Leclerc, again, is going to be uh, behind us, basically, to get that beautiful OP slipstream down the back straight into Blanchemont, maybe. But it might be even sooner because through that right hand, they're very slow in fourth gear. Not a lot of momentum through there. And Leclerc dives it down the inside there. Trademark dive bomb. We've seen him done, uh, do time and time again in this season so far. How many times have we seen him 
dive bomb in recent episodes. And there it was again. And so it's a real good scrap here. It's getting so, so tense between us two. Al from Air Sabacars. And he gets the better of me as we go through Paul now. So I'll be the one behind him as we go through uh, Blanchemont towards the bus up chicane. So maybe that'll be advantage to me, perhaps. We'll have to see. But meanwhile, we go back to this fight between Hamilton and Verstappen. So Verstappen now is actually the one ahead. So he missed when uh, Verstappen actually finished the overtake uh, to do that. But Hamilton comes back at him now. Side by side towards turn one. Hamilton back into P2 just narrowly. But Verstappen keeps his nose in there. And crucially, mid-apex actually gets fully alongside him there. So that Red Bull has some really good mid-apex speed. But Hamilton just has the engine power, I feel, on the back end. But up the hill now, who's going to who's gonna blink first base? Is it going to be Hamilton or Verstappen? And this time, it's going to be Hamilton. And Verstappen gets ahead. Now, who's going to have the run? It's a drag race down the Kemmel Straight. Hamilton with the advantage of Slipstream. But Verstappen, crucially, has DRS, actually. So he maintains that position, goes defensive, and he is going to keep that 1-2 for Red Bull Honda, it would seem, as we now move back to our POV. Lap 21, the second last lap of the Grand Prix. We're still in P5. We've not overtaken Leclerc quite yet. But now, as we go up the hill through uh, Rouge, up the hill to the Kemmel Straight, can we try and do this now in a straight line? This should be pretty simple with uh, DRS. And also, the Toro Rosso is not too far behind. So this might be a three-way fight soon enough. Ricardo's massively dropped off then in the McLaren, clearly. But here we go now. Cut across the racing line, back up into P4. But the work is not done there. But right now, through this next right-hander, unlike last time, I will make sure I don't give it a position this time now as we go down the hill in Sector 2. But now, on to the last lap of the Grand Prix. And as we go through the last few corners of the second last lap, Leclerc right up our chuff there. The proximity arrow getting closer and closer. He's on the left-hand side in the mirror. We go defensive on the inside there. He has a great break zone there. Around the outside, we're side by side now on the outside of the last corner there. A bit of a long way round. And so that means we unfortunately lose the position once again as Leclerc literally rockets past us on the left-hand side there into turn one. So this is the last lap of the Grand Prix. This is it. We have to make this overtake and we have to make it count to maintain this P4 and limit the damage as much as we can because I'm pretty sure Pierre Gasly is winning this Grand Prix in the Red Bull Honda. So here we go now for the move on the right-hand side. DRS open. Van Dorn might actually also join the party and actually help us out a little bit in terms of slowing uh, Leclerc down. And so that might give us a bit of breathing room, to be honest. So that might be a blessing in disguise. As Alonso, man, we haven't seen this entire Grand Prix since the fast up of the Grand Prix. So I think both Renaults had a horrendous uh, Grand Prix today. And so as we come through the last two corners then, Gasly has won the Grand Grand Prix, but we have got the maximum we could have hoped for today. P4, I will take that very much so. Well done, good finish. You stepped up and achieved what we asked. Good job. A great win then for the Red Bull team today. Tell me, Ant, what was the key to this success? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. So like I said, Pierre Gasly did end up winning the Grand Prix. A 1-2 for Red Bull Honda. They look really strong out there with the upgrades uh, for this uh, race weekend. With Hamilton third place, so P4 really was the maximum, maximum I could have hoped for there. So uh, very much damage limitation race for us. And uh, they got a little bit frosty with Leclerc at times there. But like I said, needs must. He's nowhere near the top of the championship. So if this was real life, I feel like multi 1-2 would have been called there. Or some kind of just message just to say, take it easy because you're not the one in the championship fight. We are. And so Gasly is now level on point to me in the championship. But he moves up into first place because he's got uh, way more wins than me. I think he's on his fifth win of the season, actually. So I'm actually doing pretty damn well to be on level points with the championship leader saying I've got three less wins than me. That's how consistent uh, consistent I've been at scoring some decent points in this Alfa Romeo Sauber. And the Constructors, to my surprise, we took the lead of the Constructors because that's how badly Renault did. And obviously Red Bull have been lagging a little bit uh, so far. Only now they've been trying to catch up a little bit with, uh, with that win there with Gasly. So they're still in third place. And so we take the lead ahead of Renault and the Constructors. So very happy with that, actually. And so all in all, can't complain too much, but it is going to be still, you know, I think a few of you guys in the comments below of last episode thought, okay, he's won a second race. He's taking the lead by uh, 13 points. It's going to be easy now, isn't it? I, I really don't think so. I, I honestly think this is going to be the hardest championship I've ever won because of how slow this car is. Like It just keeps getting slower and slower as we go on through the Grand Prix because obviously I can't upgrade like I've, set, I've been banging on about for so long and every other team is upgrading still. So it is going to be a big challenge. I don't think some of you guys are quite comprehending that. So I'm not taking it for granted. Maybe some of you guys are, but I'm definitely not. And so we go on for the next episode episode and we're just going to have to try and do the best job we can there in Italy. Hopefully maybe we can try and pull something out of the bag for the Italian uh, fans out there. Let's go to the end of the episode then with some interviews from Claire. 
great work out there today. How do you think it went? Things looked close between you and your rival for a bit. But you came out on top, didn't you? With the fight against Leclerc, gonna say, was there any ever doubt or any being nice and, nice and egotistical and showmanship-like? You're beating all expectations. Would you say we all underestimated you? And once again, yes, quite frankly, I am offended that you would suggest such a thing, huh? This race has cost you first place in the championship. Do you think you have what it takes to get it back? And I'm gonna go with, of course I can get first place back, because I, I did have it in the first place. And I thought that's quite a positive answer, but apparently my team didn't like that answer. Did you say things between you and your rival got a bit heated today? And with the rivalry with Leclerc, obviously I beat him today, so nothing I can't take. You know, if he wants to come at me and try and ruin my championship bout, that's fine by me. I can take it, I can try and beat him on track, it's fine by me. Great, well that's everything. And so that's going to see us through to the end of the episode for the Belgium Grand Prix, guys. If you did enjoy that episode, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the cons below. If you are new around here, you can subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content. Like I said, we did the best job we could this episode. Next time in the Italian Grand Prix, we go again. Maybe that'll be better, but that's how the season's looked so far. You can see Gasly has obviously won the more Grand Prix, but we've been very consistent with all those top uh, point paying positions. So I've been happy, really happy with how our driving been in this uh, bit of a slower car compared to our rivals of the Red Bull, Merck and Renault technically, because Renault are still technically the faster car, so they're just doing a bad job in the race really in reality. So guys, till next time, hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. I've been Arava. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.